morning first prayer. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Say good morning to those watching on Facebook, YouTube, whatever other means we have. Just thank you. We feel your presence. Um, I'm going to start. scripture this morning. Mm. I'm going to read from Psalms 100. It reads as follows. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his court with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generation. Praise be to the name, praise be to the, to the Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just gather this day Lord, we gather to just praise you, Heavenly Father, to sing songs of Zion, Lord. Lord, we gather to encourage each other to love one another, Lord, as you have commanded us to do. Lord, we just thank you for carrying us through to this day from past Sunday to this Sunday, Lord. Lord, we ask that you touch the hands of those who aren't in attendance heavenly father that you be with them heavenly father and father we ask that you strengthen those that need to be strengthened heavenly father encourage those that need to be encouraged lord but heavenly father today we just want to praise your holy name it's in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen announcements we like to say a happy birthday to our own angela king who be having a birthday this week on July 3rd. Happy wedding anniversary is in order for the Will Bonds, Freddie and Carol. I know that they are out enjoying their anniversary. Um, first off, let's go back, Mary. Let's, let's sing happy birthday to Angela. <laughs> excited yesterday not the past but yesterday just want to commend uh, brother Mario over there with his um, uh, ensemble youth ensemble that he gathered yesterday they had practice yesterday and um, those kids really sang I mean those kids sang to the honor of God and I'm just gonna be a blessing I'm just looking forward to what he has, Mario has in store for the kids and what the kids bring, because they're bringing it. So, Mario, you better be ready. <laughs> All right. Again, still have a little time to put in the application for the scholarship. Scholarship applications available for graduating high school seniors. Please see any committee member. The committee members are Karen Thomas, Jerry McClendon, Jackie Jones, myself, and Holly Carnegie. Bible study and junior church is canceled for the rest of the summer. It'll pick up again in September. Daily prayer is at 6 p.m. 
ask that you join and experience more. Every evening except holidays, dial 848-220-3300. The access code is 152-3848-POUND. If that's all the announcements, I'm going to ask Sister Erica to come forward and bring us into praise and worship this morning. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. It's so good to be here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Another time. Somebody say it's so good to be here. Because I know some other places we could be, but it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. It's so good to be here. We welcome you all online, wherever you are. We're so glad that you're tuning in to First Black Baptist Church this morning. Hallelujah. God is good. His grace endures forever, and his mercy is everlasting. Amen. 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 The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. I don't know about you, but if you are between 3 and 4 a.m., you hear the birds singing, hallelujah. Now, if the birds could sing every morning, I know I can give God a little bit of praise. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm so glad to be able to open my mouth and declare who he is, the creator, the one, the I am, the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the ending. And when you see me all excited for joy this morning, I want to be able to testify that it's nothing but the goodness of the Lord. It's not that I feel perfect, because I do feel the aches and pains every now and then. But I just give joy and I honor the Lord who has kept me. Amen? Amen. This song says, I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. Amen. To worship you. Amen. Amen. It is an honor to praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, we're going to let it be a sweet sound in his ear. Amen. Amen. I love you, Lord. Yes, God. And I lift my voice to worship you. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. Let it be a sweet, a sweet sound in your ear. Could you help me just sing, I love you, Lord. Yes, yes. I love you, Lord.
testimony. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sins upon If I be lifted, 
I will draw all men to me. You're my closest friend, and you I live. Have my being. I wanna draw close. One more time. Needs him. He said, if I be lifted, I will draw all men unto me. You're my closest friend, and you I live. Have my being. I wanna draw closer. Needs to draw closer. I wanna draw closer. You're all I need, every breath you breathe through me. You're all I need, let your rivers flow through me. You're all I need, every breath you breathe through me. You're all I need, let your rivers flow through me. You're all I you're all I need, you're all I need, you're all I need, oh, 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 Jonathan, come in here. Did I see Jonathan? I didn't see Jonathan. Well, hello, beautiful family. I know there was a graduation in Levon's family, and I was going to say, oh, the bir birthday girl. Yes, the birthday girl. Well, thank God for another year, and it took the Lord, amen, by his grace. You looking good. We're going to sing happy birthday to you again while you're here. Stand up, Sister Le Deacon LaVon. Yes, stand up. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Deacon Mitchell. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Deacon Mitchell. God bless you. It's good to be getting a birthday, amen? That means you're still here by the grace of God, amen. 
and it's so good to have you beautiful people here. Somebody say it's good to be seen. Amen. I can name a few people we've lost this year, but it's good to be seen. Glory to God. Glory to God. At this time, we're going to sing our congregational hymn. Amen. And we're going to ask that you would just stand with us as we honor the hymns and the Lord. Amen. And we'll sing these songs unto the glory of the God. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture now burst in my sight. Angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Oh, this is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Verse 3, perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Church, it's prayer time. Amen. Just like to acknowledge again, LaVon and your family this morning. It's good to see two pews full with the Mitchell family. You have a lot to pray for, a lot is going on in your family to be thankful for. And we're gonna, I'm going to ask Minister Darrell Malty to come up and pray for us. Because uh, he knows all about the power of prayer. So, walking up here, living, living miracle. Also want to acknowledge uh, Brother Nance in the back. We haven't seen Brother Jimmy Nance in quite a long time, but you're looking good.
Indeed, it's a privilege to speak and pray unto our God. He not only hears our prayers, but he answers our prayers. I'm a living witness that God answers prayer. There's still miracles to be had in the kingdom of God. And I just want to encourage you that no matter what you're going through, that God is still able. Bow with me, if you will. Father, in the name of Jesus. First of all, Lord God, we say thank you for just one more day. You didn't have to do it, but you did it anyhow. Breath in our bodies, our blood running warm through our veins. The activities of, of our limbs is the privilege that you've given us this day. New mercies when we woke up this morning. As we heard the birds chirp. And as we saw the sunshine. Lord, you've been good to us. Some blessings, Lord God, we don't even see. But you're constantly in the background orchestrating. Maneuvering and seeing about us. For that we're grateful. Lord, you're a kind God. And Father, we just thank you here in this place. We do see calamities and all sorts of things going on around us. Buildings collapsing and people losing their lives. Families grieving. And Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you go by these places. You give strength and comfort where needed. So much is going on, Lord. Babies are being maimed and killed even in our streets. But Father, you said if my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then would you forgive their sins and heal their lands. So, Father, I'm asking, Lord God, that you go by there. I'm asking, Lord God, that you give comfort and give strength. And, Father, even now, Lord God, we thank you, Lord God, for putting even your hand around the pandemic that we've been going through. I pray, Lord God, for families who have suffered but even now, Lord God, I'm thanking you, Lord God, for those that you have brought through. I'm praying, Lord God, that you'll continue to put your hand on this, this government, the peoples and leaders around us that have sway and say in our lives. And I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that the church will still have influence, still have power, in your name. So, Lord God, we don't want to come with a grocery list this morning. Well, Lord God, we want to thank you for what you've already done. Thank you how you brought us through all types of circumstances and situations and grief. I'm asking God in the name of Jesus that you reconcile families where families have been separated. Father, in the name of Jesus, homes that, Lord God, have been uh, destroyed, Lord God, for whatever reason, bring them back together. Bring them back together, God. Because, God, we still know you're able. So now, God, as we move forth, we thank you for what you're about to do all the glory that you will get. All the glory that you will get. 
in the strong name of Jesus. Now, Father, we move from this prayer, but may we never move from you, but that you might ever rest, that you may ever rule and abide in all of us these things and other things in the name of Jesus. We all say amen. Amen. Now time to give. Uh, hmm? I'm going to ask the sister to come up here. <laughs> yes. Sister Gwen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. I don't know about you. But I know that I need my Lord and Savior. And we just want to, I'm so grateful that God woke us up this morning. He gave us another opportunity to do his will in our lives. So, Lord, we thank you for this precious day. It is that time of the hour where God asks us to participate to give back a portion to what he has given us. It is out of obedience, not out of um, I have to or I hate this part, but because we are so blessed that we are to be a blessing to others and joyfully give, joyfully be a blessing. And while it is about monetary blessings that build up the church and, and the things around us, but it's also our gifts and talents that he gave us yeah. to be a blessing to others. Whatever it may be, we are his prized possession that we should share ourselves with others. Um, whether it be sitting there listening to them giving a helping hand, wherever it may be, we are a blessing. Amen. I just want to um, read a scripture this morning, and it's from Matthew 22, verse 37 through 39. And it starts off by saying, <clears throat> Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart all your soul, and all your mind. Not part of your heart, not part of your soul, not part of your mind, but all of it. This is the first and greatest commandment. See, God didn't say, um, I need you to be the best you, or I want you to go out and run a marathon. God said, love him with all your heart, mind, and soul. When we understand when we do that, the Holy Spirit then comes in and guides us to do, thus says the Lord. When we think things are heavy and we can't do those things, the Holy Spirit shows us how we can get through those things and do those things. I'm sorry, I'm getting off track here. The second is equally important. Love your neighbor as Sometimes it may be hard because I might like you. I might love you, but I don't like you. But God says, love your neighbor as thyself. And that means taking care of, being there for, willingly being there for your neighbor as you would do for yourself. Amen? As this morning before you come, look in your heart and ask God, what shall I give? How shall I give and then give? Amen. I should come forward.
Tragedies are a common place. All kind of diseases, people are slipping away. Economy's down, people don't get enough pay. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. It could have been me. Thank you. With no food. Thank you. With no clothes. Thank you. With no clothes. Thank you. Thank you. Without a friend. Thank you. Just another number with the tragic end. Oh, but you didn't see fit to let none of these things be. Every day by your power, you keep on, keep on keeping me. And I want to thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us, oh Heavenly Father. All that you continue to do, oh God, we thank your many blessings that we've received and to receive, Lord God. Father God, as we, as those who came this morning and gave, we bless those who wanted to give but could not. Lord God, may we use this to build up your kingdom in the communities around us. In the precious name of our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for me. Hallelujah. I'm just up here trying to introduce our speaker today. Uh, comes from West Virginia by way of Connecticut and by way of Second Street Plainfield. A lot of us know him, but God has a way of working things out. And uh, our own chair of the deacon board is going to bring the message today. Yeah. A man who's known God. He might not have gone to New Brunswick Seminary. He might not have gone to Yale Divinity, but he knows the Lord. Yeah. So I'm going to ask Sister Erica to come up sing a selection, and then after Sister Erica sings her selection, next voice you will hear will be from our own Deacon Lawrence Lawson. Hallelujah. Amen. We are so blessed, church. Please put your hands together again. Hallelujah. We honor the men Hallelujah. and women of God that God has placed in this house. We keep clapping, keep clapping. We are so blessed. I'm so grateful. Doesn't he provide for us? There's always a ram in the bush. The Bible says, be ye also ready. Amen. Amen. Send me, Lord, I'll go. Amen. God bless you. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Praise his holy name. My God is awesome. Savior of the whole world. The giver of salvation. Praise his holy name. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Come on, I know you know this. Forever he will reign. Come on, choir. My God is awesome. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened. Forever he will reign. My God is awesome. Yes, he is. He's awesome. My God is awesome. Somebody say awesome. My God is awesome. Oh, yes, he is awesome. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. My 
God is awesome, Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation, praise his holy name. My God is awesome, Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation, by his stripes I am healed. Yes, my God is awesome, somebody say awesome, my God is awesome, oh yes he is awesome, my God is Awesome, somebody say awesome, my God is awesome, oh yes he is awesome, provider, 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 awesome, yes, awesome, my healer, my healer, my healer, my
church. And he is a deliverer. Hallelujah. Of my soul. He's awesome. Oh, yes, he is. Awesome. Yes. Yes, he's awesome. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Well, he's on. God is awesome. In the midnight hour, he's awesome. When I'm on my sick bed, he's awesome. When I'm laying down in the middle, God is awesome. Oh, say it again. Laying in my bed. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Um. My, 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 my. My God is not only awesome, he's surprising. He, he surprised me this morning. Y'all pray for Reverend Zaya Walton, who is supposed to have been preaching this morning. He called me early this morning, about 7.30. He said he was... So sick, he couldn't even hardly breathe. And uh, first thing came to my mind is, uh, 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 well, uh, uh, <laughs> and, I, and I remember Pastor always says, deacons, always be prepared. Have something to say to the people. I mean, not something, but God's word. Share with the people. God is a surprising God. In our men's fellowship this week, we talked about um, surprising. Peter was surprised when Jesus told him to feed his sheep. Peter was a fisherman. Ain't that kind of strange? He said, Lawson, this morning, you can put something together now. This is not a, this is opportunity to praise God in his word. And so, uh, before I go any further, I'd like to say, because I talked to uh, Reverend Mears yesterday. She said, pray for her. She loved to be here this morning. She's doing well, but she just had that pain in her knees. And she can't walk. But nevertheless, y'all pray for her. So good to see you, Brother Bishop, and all of you. And uh, happy birthday to Emeritus Deacon, uh, I ain't going to tell you, I ain't not going to tell nobody your age, because you don't, you don't want nobody to know your age. But we know that God has blessed you. Uh, somebody made a suggestion to you, Deacon Bill, to put some, put a rail in here. For somebody walking up, just in case. And I mentioned a Deacon LeVon. So she don't need that. She walks right, she walks right up here just as good as anybody else in here. She's one of our elders, so God bless you. Uh, hello, family. I see your handsome son there and your, son, your grandchildren. Uh, God bless y'all. Thank y'all for coming this morning. All right. I said to myself, self, you're going to be talking long. Be as short as possible. I have a question. The message I have this morning is in the form of a question. All week long, we have all experienced or seen or touched or talked to someone that was not saved. Maybe your neighbor across the street, maybe your coworker, maybe somebody in your home, in your family, somebody that you talked to that went saved. And so my question today, don't, you don't have to answer it. The question is, who cares if a sinner goes to hell? Who cares if a sinner goes to hell? Now, the question is why do people go to hell? Is it, is it because they're bad? No, it's because they don't believe. And so why do people go to heaven? Because they're good? No, because they believe. That's the difference. 
And so our scripture is taken from Luke 16th chapter. You have your Bibles, 19 through the 31st verse. Gospel of Luke, the 16th chapter, 19 through 31st verse. It's a familiar scripture. When you have it, please say amen. When you don't have it, say wait a minute, please. If you don't say anything, that means you're not even looking for it. <laughs> That's all right, too. I can read it to you. If you don't feel. Luke chapter 16, beginning with the 19th verse. Thank you. If you don't mind standing for the reading of Scripture. There was a certain rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. But there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, who was laid at his gate, desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. So it was that the beggar died and was carried by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And being in torments in Hades, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Then he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. For I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things. And likewise, Lazarus received evil things. But now he is comforted, and you are tormented. And besides all this, between us and you, there's a great gulf fixed, so that those who want to pass from here to you cannot, nor can those from there pass to us. In other words, no second chance. Then he said, I beg you, Therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, that he may testify to them, lest they also come to this place of torment. Abraham said to him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. But he said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rise from the dead. You may be seated. Many times in our lifespan, we've uh, heard people would, in fact, some of us may have had dreams of our Grandpa, grandma, mama, daddy passed and, and uh, woke up, up, woke us up in the, in the, in the middle of the night. And, man, you know, I dream, I dream my grandpa told me to start going to church, man. What? Yeah, he came to me in a dream. Came to me in a dream. So this proves right here something. The dead don't come back. You know, the, the, uh, People with the bones and all that stuff, talking to the dead, it's not true. Let's not forget one thing, too. This, this Lazarus in this story is not the same Lazarus, Mary and Martha's brother. This is a different Lazarus, and his name means God helps. So my question again is, who cares if a sinner goes to hell? A fearful and often forgotten text. Fearful because the subject is hell. Fearful because the speaker is Jesus. Forgotten because most have forgotten or chosen a more pleasant text. Most preachers and teachers will preach this, teach this, but they'll use it a different way. Uh, the aim now is to make people feel better. Make people feel successful in preaching and teaching. Few sermons have to do with saving souls from hell. 
Who cares if a sinner goes to hell? Well, let's look at some evidence of people who cares. Number one, God the Father cares. The Father cares and sent his son in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Bethlehem stable cries out for the care. The Father cares. Calvary's cross cried out. The Father cares. Long wait for the Christ's return cries out. The Father cares. The one who cares for the fallen sparrow cares about keeping souls out of hell. Number two, Jesus, the son cares. Jesus said, I came to seek and to save that which was lost, Luke 19, 10. Jesus said, when we see me, when you see me reaching out to sinners, you know that I care. This man receives sinners. This is what the Pharisees and the, gent and the, and the scribes said. This man receives sinners. So uh, we knew that he cares. And then him sending his disciples into the world in Matthew 28 chapter, he said, go you and baptize, uh, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. That's the disciples that we supposed to be doing now. Go and make disciples of all men. Today, we shall be with him in paradise. This is one way of saying that Jesus said the same thing that we should be saying to the thief or the robber or the rapist or whomever. Today, brother, you can be with me in paradise. I'm going to paradise when I leave this place. I'm going to see the Father. I'm going to see the Son. The Holy Spirit cares. The Holy Spirit coming in the day of Pentecost, Acts second chapter says, it empowered believers to, be, to witness. 3,000 souls were saved that day. Still speaks through Christians to reach souls. The Holy Spirit is the Lord of the harvest. Bringing conviction to sinners, revealing Christ to repentant heart, regenerating those who trust in Christ. The Holy Spirit cares. And not only the Holy Spirit, not only Jesus, not only God, but heaven cares. You notice when someone joins the church or someone be part of the, of the church, scripture says there's joy in heaven. The heavenly choir praises God. The singing and the angels praise God. There's joy with one sinner who repents. Every convert brings a song of praise to heaven. Do you care if people go to hell? We make heaven glad when we lead people to Christ. And not only that, hell cares. Compare the rich man and Lazarus in life. Compare them in death. The cry of the rich man in hell, send Lazarus. Please send Lazarus to help me. Five minutes in hell will make us all concerned about our souls. That's a very, that, maybe that's why folks don't preach about hell. In, in the early centuries, they used to preach about five stone and bent stone and going to hell if we don't do this. But as people start to go to uh, theological seminaries, they set that aside and they start preaching uh, faith and hope, which is good too. But they never talk about you going to hell. Old folks used to tell you that. You keep that up, son, you're going to hell. In fact, you're on your way to hell. You keep on going to Hey, on the street, drinking and partying and all that, you are going to hell. They didn't, they didn't say, they didn't play. Thank you, thank you, D. They didn't play. And we, as adults, we need to tell our children the same thing. If they're going astray, if they're going where we know they're going to get in trouble, you're on your way to hell, man. I need to sit and talk to you. I need to tell you about the Lord. Even though they may, oh, man, I don't want to hear that. Tell them anyway. Tell them anyway. Do you care? Those who really care are quick to share the gospel. Those who care pray and witness to bring sinners to Christ. Finally, I told you I'm going to be short. This is for first part. This is my prayer for first part. Lord, help us to be a praying church. Help us. Be a loving church. Help us to be a giving church. More importantly, help us to be a witnessing church. In Acts, the 17th chapter, 
5 to 7 verse. I'm going to read this. You don't have to look for it. It says, but the Jews who were not persuaded became envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace, gathered a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason and sought to bring them out to the people. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city and crying out, those who have turned the world upside down have come here too. The whole point of this scripture is that Jason used his home to minister and to have Paul and Silas stay there, but they turned the world upside down. This is my prayer for, for us at First Part, for all the churches, but specifically because I'm here at First Part, to change this whole area, to change this town. that People can say, that's First Part. I go to First Part. Oh, yeah, why? What's so important about first part? Well, they feed the hungry. They go out and even though they pass, they may pass tracks out to people. They talk to you about the Lord. It's not nothing about nothing but the Lord. When they sing, they sing to the Lord. They praise God. So they change the world. The opposition will always be present, even in the church. Paul and Cyrus preached in the synagogue as long as the Jews allowed it. Often those who were not Jews would come to the service and hear Paul's preaching. The Jewish leaders didn't try to refute the theology of Paul, but they were jealous of his popularity of the preachers. You watch some of these preachers on TV, or you may hear some of their local preachers. They are critical of a lot of things they do. They got a large congregation. What are they doing? They're preaching the gospel. I would say, leave it alone. Because sometimes God uses whomever he, he wishes to use. And, and a lot of churches are filled with, with, with people, and a lot of churches are not. It's not. The gospel doesn't change. But these men were really jealous of Paul and Silas because of their popularity. Plus, they knew the scriptures. Paul knew the gospel. He knew the law, and you couldn't refute that. And so the Jewish leaders didn't try to refute him. We don't know too much about Jason, except that he was ever leading the local host and sponsor Paul and Silas. He took, the, he took the heat for all the problems. He was one of the many unsung heroes who helped spread the gospel in the New Testament. We don't read too much about that. But because of Jason, Paul and Silas was able to minister more effectively. You and I, may not receive much attention in the first part. We may not even receive, we may only see, receive grief and criticism for our service for Christ. But God wants to use us. Lives will be changed because of your courage and your faithfulness. What a powerful reputation these early Christians had. The, the good news changed lives, broke down social barriers, opened prison doors, caused people to cared deeply for one another, stirred them to worship God. That's the whole concept, to bring people to worship God. It's not about us. It's not about singing. It's not about preaching. It's about Jesus Christ. Letting people see Christ in you. Letting see the Christ in us. Letting, let, letting people hear Christ in us. Because people uh, may, be attracted, may be attracted by your personality, by your style, but still if Christ is not included, they're just attracted by your style. They're not going to change. The gospel is the only thing that can change lives. The word of God is the only thing that can change lives. Our world needs to be turned upside down. Our world needs to be transformed. This gospel doesn't merely improve programs and encourage good conduct. This gospel transforms lives. We want to transform lives. We all should take courage and ask God, how can I help spread this good news uh, throughout this world? Because I care. Because I care if a sinner goes to hell. I want to thank you for your attention. And I do hope you care. And I know you do care. Otherwise, you would not be here this morning. This morning, there may be someone sitting there saying, 
what in the world is he talking about? Who is this Jesus? Three reasons you need Jesus. Because you have a past. You can't go back, but he can. The Bible says Jesus Christ, same yesterday, today, and forever. He can walk in those places of sin and failure, wipe the slate clean, and give you a new beginning. Number two, because you need a friend. Jesus knows the worst about you, and he believes the best for you. Why? Because he sees you not as you are, but as you will be. And when he gets through with you, and finally, because he holds the future, yours and mine. Who else are you going to trust? Jesus said, In his hands, you are safe and secure. Today, tomorrow, and all eternity. The word says, for well, I know the plans I have for you. Plans for good, not for evil. Give you a future and a hope. And when you pray, I will listen. Jesus said, Trust him. I am he. If you would like to begin a personal relationship with him, I am Please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I believe you died for me and that your blood pays for my sins and provides me with a gift of eternal life. By faith, I receive the gift and I acknowledge you as my Lord and my Savior. If you pray that prayer, praise God, you are saved. We thank you. We praise God for you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for allowing us to come and share. We thank you. We lift up our brother sick. Said he couldn't hardly breathe, but yet and still he had enough air in him to call me and tell me that someone needed to replace him. And I thank you, Lord God, for your word. Pray, God, that the word of Christ, the spirit of Christ, the power of Christ, will change and transform, will multiply, will increase as we go from here. Father, we pray that you will bless our church family, all who have come this morning. We pray, God, that your spirit will rest on them, your spirit will rest in them, and they will know that they've spent some precious time with you in this sanctuary. Bless all who have come, Lord. Bless all who leave. This is our prayer. We pray this all in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. You may stand. And now the benediction. bless you and keep you. May his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Peace he promises. My peace I will give you. My peace I leave you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit let the church sing. Say that. Let the church So let the church say